Dear God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to gather to study your word. And Father, we just pray that, uh, that you'll help what we do the next few minutes to be helpful and be your will, be your truth. And uh, we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to start a new uh, character trait today. Anybody remember what the last one was? Courage. Courage. All right. We got it. Okay. Today we're going to start a, uh, a few lessons about uh, generosity. Now, usually when people hear that word, they think, oh boy, he's going to talk to us about money. And uh, yeah, we're going to do a little bit of that. Uh, but I want you to understand starting, so you remember this throughout, that when it comes to Christians needing to be generous, Money is the bottom peg of the areas that we need to be generous in. Not that it's the least important, but I believe this. Well, I believe it because I, I, I've seen it. Uh, if you're not generous financially, if you're not giving financially, you won't do any of the other stuff either. You won't be generous in this and this and this, and we're going to identify those thises uh, down the road. But, but if you can't get something as simple as being unbelievably grateful to God for the grace that he's extended to us, we all deserve to go to hell. That's exactly what we deserve. But he said, nah, I don't want you to do that. I don't want everybody to do that. So I'll take your place. And if we accept him, he's taking our place. I don't know that we can even wrap our head around that concept. But try to. Try to wrap your head around the fact that without Jesus Christ, uh, we're all destined to die. Our soul is going to continue to live, and our soul without Jesus Christ will live in eternal torment. And he said, I don't want you to live in torment. I want you to live with me and God and the Holy Spirit in heaven forever and ever and ever. Wow, what, what a deal. Now, if our response to that kind of generosity from God, if we can't get our money figured out, if we can't learn to be generous with our wealth, we're in a boatload of spiritual trouble. Now, I don't know that that's going to cost you your soul, but I know it's going to rob you of to all kinds of blessings in this life. We're going to look at that sometime today or next week or next week. But, but I just want you to start out with this thought in your head. God has been so good to me. So good to me. So gracious to me. How can I withhold anything from him? How can I withhold the, uh, the, the material blessings that he's given me, how can I not turn around and pay it forward? To not do that, and I don't mean to be harsh, but to not do that is the greatest example of greed and selfishness and self-absorbed do you see that if I can't open up my wallet and give back to God and that doesn't, that doesn't just mean giving to the church when the plate passes by but if I can't open up my wallet and give and give and give and give I, I I'm in, a, I'm in a very spiritually shaky place in my 
my life. So keep that thought in mind as we kind of jump into this. And I told Jim, and he's real short-handed back there today. Not that Delbert has short hands, but uh, usually the people that help him aren't back there. And uh, I sent my slides to Jim on Friday. And uh, by this morning, uh, I have a, a very much different approach than I had on Friday. So uh, I told him I'm going to jump around, and, and if he can keep up with us, okay. And if he can't, that's okay, too. Okay? You stay with me. Okay? All right. So what's generosity? Webster defines it like this. It's liberality in spirit. Magnanimous. I like that word. Isn't that a powerful word? Being generous means you're magnanimous in your giving. It's a mark of abundance or ample proportions. There's two Greek words in the New Testament, uh, at least two, maybe there's three, that are translated uh, bountiful. In the NIV, it's always translated generous. And those words mean bountiful, abundance, and I like this one. Those, we, those words mean fatness, thick and well-grown. Okay, you got that picture? Okay. Generous is fatness, <laughs> Uh, thick and well grown. Now I'm talking about your wallet. I'm not talking about your physique. Okay. Uh, in the Roman world, generosity was seen as a virtue that only the rich and powerful could possess. Why do you think that was the case in the Roman world? The slaves, the servants didn't have anything that they could call their own. Yeah, it, it was a very strict caste system, okay? And whatever group you were born into, that's where you stayed. You know, you, you didn't have the, uh, uh, the great benefits of capitalism, like in the United States of America, where you can be born, and hopefully capitalism is what we, we keep, you can be born in a, in a very poor, destitute family, but you don't have to be confined to that. You, you can work your way out of that. In the Roman world, you, you kind of were what you were, okay? The Latin word for generous means referral to a person's birth or nobility. Again, you were either born into wealth and generosity or you weren't. And, and you didn't have the capacity to change that. Here's a definition that... Uh, my definition, it comes to my mind. What's generosity, Mike? It's an attitude. It's an attitude. It's coming to a place in life when giving is more important than getting. That's the attitude. Now, if you have that attitude, generosity will just take care of itself. Whether you're talking about money, or you're talking about your time, or you're talking about forgiveness, or many of the other things in the Bible that talk about how important it is to be generous about them. It's an attitude. It's coming to a place in life where giving is more important than getting. Sharing is more important than storage. Think about that for a minute. Did, did you realize, and, and, and just think this through, and pay attention as you kind of go through your life this next couple of weeks. Do you realize that one of the most booming businesses in the United States today, what would you say one of them is? Connected to what we're talking about. Huh? Banking. No? Storage units. Yeah, you can't, you can't drive two blocks without finding a boatload of storage units someplace. Okay. What's that about? Well, that's about a society that does not have the attitude that sharing is more important than storing. More important than storing. I wouldn't embarrass anybody in here by asking them if you have a storage unit or not. But, you, you, you know, you kind of... Uh, got to do with that whatever you want to do with it. That demonstrates to me that we live in a world 
where getting and gaining stuff is so important that, 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 we, can't, that we have to build, tear down our barns and do what? Build bigger barns. And when I can't have, I don't have enough property to build bigger barns on my property, then I go down to Rhino Storage and buy four or five storage units and fill those up. We're, we're not, and, and here's, uh, I'm gonna, here's where I'm going to start to jump around. Most people think that the, the, the U.S. is a generous country. Okay? And in, in some ways we are. Okay? Uh, some of our generosity, I think, is the height of stupidity. Okay? Yeah. You know, when you're being generous to the people who want to kill you and destroy you, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> that's pretty stupid. Okay? But in general, the U.S. is seen as a generous nation, so therefore you would think that we are a generous people. Now, listen carefully to me. If, if the statistics I'm going to share here with you don't apply to you, then don't take them on. Okay? Say, so, well, that's not me. Okay? I, I am generous. I have that attitude of sharing, that attitude of giving. I'm not about storing up treasures on earth where moth and dust destroy. I'm about... <coughs> Storing things up in heaven. That's what really counts. But listen to a few of these numbers, okay. I've got way too many, so I'm going to have to skip a bunch of them. In the year 2016, Glenda nicely sat and listened to all these statistics yesterday. Okay, I think she was listening. Yeah. I was reading, so she might have been asleep. I don't know. In 2016... Uh, this is slide number six if you want to try to find it, Jim. Americans gave in charitable gifts $390 billion. Now, most people look at that number and go, wow! Or some people may look at that number and go, wow. $390 billion. That amount, $390 billion, is higher and this is what Americans gave charitably in 2016, that's higher than the GDP, that's gross domestic product, that's, uh, the GDP is everything within a country that is sold and every service that's rendered. You add those two numbers together and you get the GDP, okay? That's, that's a big number, big number. And Americans gave $390 billion. That's more than the GDP of 160 countries. So you would look at that and say, wow, we're pretty generous. We give more than most countries ever take in. So let's take a closer look at that. Well, here, here's the number to catch, okay? You with me? More than 85% of Americans, okay, that means eight and a half people out of 10, more than 85% of Americans give less than 2% of their income to charitable stuff. Less than 2%. Okay, let's make that number make a little sense. Anybody want to guess what the average income in America is today? Taking the you know people that have nothing and people that have a whole bunch. What do you think the average income in the United States of America is? Well, you guys are close, but a little high. Fifty-seven thousand dollars. Okay, fifty-seven thousand dollars is what the average American makes today. Now, some people would say, "Well, I wish I was average." <laughs> okay, yeah. So if you make $57,000 a year and you're in that 
uh, percent of people, that 85% that gives 2% of your income. And we're not just talking about giving it to church. We're talking about giving it to any charitable organization. To church, to St. Jude's, to, to the guy sitting out at Walmart, uh, any of that. Okay. You would, you would be contributing $1,425 a year of your income, which amounts to $27.40 a week. Now, most people spend more than $27 a week going to Stoked and Starbucks in a week. Right? Yeah, you, you can't go in those places without spending 10 bucks for a drink. And you hit that three or four times in a week, and you've spent more on that than you give to charitable organizations. And we're generous folks. We're generous folks. Think about it. Think about it. And remember where we started, okay? Dan, we are so blessed. If we had nothing physically, but we're saved by God's grace. Wow. And yet most, most Americans, and this is, across, this is across everybody that goes to church and doesn't go to church, can't manage to find more than $27.50 to contribute to a charitable organization. Now let's see where I want to go. Any thoughts or comments so far? Let's do that. Okay, turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 22. No, don't turn it there. Turn it to Psalm 37. And I'm not trying to pick on us this morning, okay? I, I, I'm not trying to pick on us. What I'm trying to do is this, and this is what we're going to be trying to do for the next few weeks. I'm trying to help you get more and more blessed by God. That, that's the effort here. I, I, I'm not trying to, to get more money into the church, church coffers. Okay, I could care less about that. I care less about that. You know, as long as we have money to pay the bills, okay. If we don't, we don't. We'll figure that out. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to get you to increase your giving to the church. Now, if you need to take a look at that, look at it. But I'm trying to get you to be blessed in life. God has the ability to bless our lives in unbelievable ways. Take, kind of take this however you want to take it, okay? I hope you see it as a blessing and not see it as a, as, as a bragging. When I got really sick last, I don't know how long it's been now, several years ago, uh, we, we owned our own business. So we got paid whatever I made from working. Now, that's pretty simple to understand, isn't it? Okay, I wasn't able to work for a long time. Now, because I'm I was self-employed, I didn't get to sign up for unemployment. Yeah, unemployment in my book meant no money. That's what it meant. Okay, and I'm not crying about that. God took care of us in a marvelous way. Here's one one illustration. I was in Cleveland. Glendon came come back home to try to figure out what she could pay and what she couldn't pay. Okay. Uh, she didn't have enough to make a house payment. Didn't have enough money, let alone the other bills that had backed up. She was talking to somebody on the phone, and she didn't bring that issue up. She just said, I, I'm, I'm home trying to pay some bills, turn around and go back up. So. 
uh, the person she was talking to said, well, you know, what's, what's the deal with your house and your house payment? And she said, well, I'm trying to figure out how to make it. Uh, I, I don't know if I can make it this month. And I sure know that I can't make it the next month. So the person said, well, how much is your house payment? And she told him how much it was. And she said, uh, and the, the other person said, well, how long, how much longer do you have to, did you have to pay on your house? And she told him, okay, they paid our house off. You think God's not good? Wow. If you're generous with you, God will bless you until it blows your mind. Yeah. That's right. During that time period, I, I, Glenda probably knows, I can't begin to tell you how much money was given to us. Never missed a bill. Now that's not because we're such a great people. I will tell you this, we've made it a practice our entire married life to be generous. To be generous. Not about storing, but about giving, about sharing, about sharing. Proverbs chapter, what did I say? No, I said Psalms, didn't I? Chapter 37. Let's start at verse 21. You, you really would get more out of this if we read the whole chapter, but we don't have time to do that. Verse 21. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Okay? Now, what's that saying? Well, here's what it's saying. If you're righteous, that attitude of giving will just be a part of who you are. If you struggle, get this, if you struggle with being generous to God and to other people in need, what's that say that what area in your life are you in trouble in? Look at it. It's not difficult. Your righteousness. If I'm not generous, it says, but the righteous give generally, generously. So if I'm not, don't have that generous mentality, then that says something about where I'm at spiritually. Because if I'm righteous, not because of my own good, but because of what God's blessed me with, I'm just going to be generous. Those the Lord blesses, verse 22, will inherit the land. For those he curses will be cut off. If the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. Though he stumble, he'll not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young and now I'm old. I can identify with that. I was young and now I'm old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Yeah. Yeah. Never seen it. Never seen his, the righteous kids, children, gone begging. Never seen that. 26, they, the righteous, that have never been forsaken, their kids have never gone begging for bread. They are always generous. Who is? Righteous. Those that are trying their best to be cloaked with the, with the person of Jesus Christ. 
They are always generous and they lend freely and their children will be blessed. Children will be blessed. We got you know several other uh, scriptures we're going to look at in the next few weeks. But, but I just want you to, to kind of grasp a couple thoughts this morning to think about. And then we'll build on them as we go. And here's what I would encourage you to do. Are you with me? Okay. And, and be honest and be real with yourself. Don't, you know, it doesn't matter to me whether you're honest or real with yourself. But do it for yourself. Just go home and do a simple little math exercise. Okay. How much money came into my house last year? Now, stay with me here, okay? Count it all, okay? Count it all. You know, you, you made, God blessed you with what the government took, but it still was, it was yours, it was his blessing. So sit down and count everything that comes into your house. Paychecks, unemployment, Stuff you do on the side, whatever income comes in. And for your own sake, be honest. Jot that number down. And then go through as much as you can and see how generous you were with that. How generous you were with that. My fear is that way too many of us are going to fall into that 85% 85% group that gives on the average income 2740 a week. And if that's if you're okay with that, if that's what you feel like you've been prospered and and that's uh, that's what you purpose in your heart, that's great that's okay and you're not going to go to hell for that. Okay. But keep this picture in mind. If I'm a farmer and I'm planting seed, if I plant two rows of corn, don't expect to cultivate and pick ears of corn off of 20 rows. Because that's not going to happen, is it? No, it can't happen. But if you're planting corn generously. What's going to come back is generosity. And if you're, if you're generous because of how generous God has been to you, God will give you corn not for 20 rows, but for 20 acres. You cannot give him. You can't be more generous than him. He owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. And he owns the hills. And the minerals that are in the hills. And he is just looking for opportunities to find generous people that he can bless generously. I mean, that just makes his day. You know, the, the, the day that I told you about our house, we, we were thrilled, humbled, relieved. God was so excited he couldn't see straight because he saw somebody, some buddies, seeing somebody in trouble and giving them a huge blessing. And what do you think he did with those folks? Yeah. He poured out the blessings on them. That's how it works. Now, if you're trying to get blessings so you can go put it in a rhino storage, you got the wrong mentality. But I encourage you to, to be generous, to begin to think generosity. To begin to think, and, we, and, and typically as a habit, we don't think this way. Begin thinking 
and looking for, here's the key, looking for opportunities to be generous. If you start looking, they will be all over the place. They'll be all over the place. Whether that's giving money, giving time, giving forgiveness, giving all kinds of things. But if we don't look for them, you know, we're just kind of tunnel vision and we don't see them. See, I guarantee you this, just because of our chat this morning, you're going to see more storage buildings this week than you saw last week. Okay, you're going to be more attentive to that. Hey, look, there's another one, there's another one. Man, he was right. The opportunities to be generous out there are all over the place. All over the place. And the more generous we are, the more generosity we receive from God. So think about that. We'll build on this the next uh, two or three weeks. Anybody got a comment, question? I've kind of dominated today. Maybe I do every day, I don't know. Okay, take a break, okay?